Hey everyone, welcome. Let me ask you something guys. How old is your main bike? My Yeti SB100 is five years old. Okay, five years and a few months. And you know what else is five years old? This, the Fox Transfer Dropper Post version one, the one introduced in 2016. After all these years, I never really fully serviced it at Fox because you cannot really service it at home anyway. But the dropper finally gave up. It doesn't fully uh, come up anymore and I have to replace it with something new. And guess what I decided to go with? It's another Fox transfer. This is the new version. So in this video, I'm gonna take a look at this, put it right next to my five years old uh, Fox transfer. I'm also gonna take a look at this, the little remote that they launched at the same time with this version two dropper post. So let's check them out. And I'm gonna start with answering a couple of potential questions. Number one being why factory this time versus the Performance Elite that I had in the past. That's only because I wanted to match my suspension if you want. Everything that I have on this bike is factory. So this time I went for the transfer factory. Otherwise there's no difference between factory and Performance Elite aside from the coating of the stanchion. Second question is gonna be why not transfer SL? because it's lighter. Well, two reasons for that. Number one is Transfer SL doesn't have infinite adjustment. You only have fully extended, fully lowered. And number two, this is a 30.9 seat post. And if you take a look at what they offer, you're gonna see that they only have the 100 millimeter drop for that Transfer SL. And I was interested, if anything, into bigger drop. That's why I got the 175 mil versus the 150 that I used in the past. But let's see what I got in the box. What you're gonna get is the Fox branded box. This is the Transfer Factory and you see it clearly. And here at one end, you're gonna get all the other details of the dropper post. Inside the box, you're gonna get obviously the dropper post. And right next to it, you have that little ferrule that goes at the end of the cable. This was attached with a zip tie to the new head, the transfer seat post owner's manual. And that's pretty much all you're gonna get. There's nothing else here under this little box. Compared to the old design, this new transfer introduces a few changes. So let me take this down and show it to you side by side the new versus the old. And if you were to look at the bottom, the actuator is kind of hard to tell which one is which. It looks like they have reused the old actuator on the new dropper, which might be a good thing because it worked just fine. You come up here to the color and you're gonna see the round shape of the old and the nutted new one. This actually allows you to open it up and do minor greasing or regreasing inside the lower tube, something that the old did not allow whatsoever. And then coming up to the top, this is where you're gonna see the biggest change. You can see this patent pending new type of saddle clamp as opposed to the old one, which was kind of a traditional style. This allows you not only for a lot easier installation, but this also provides you with a lower stack height. Fully compressed, the new clamp provides this lower two and a half, three centimeters stack height. You can see it here, new versus the old versus PMW loam. That is very similar stack height with a new transfer design. This is one of the more affordable dropper posts in the market today. The old dropper was filled with nitrogen, 275 PSI's and not really user serviceable. Well, the new dropper is still filled with nitrogen, 325 PSI's from what I read, and you still don't have a valve underneath the saddle clamp to adjust that pressure. So you will be able to do minor maintenance, like I said, something that the old one didn't allow, but otherwise for full service, you would still probably have to send it back to Fox. New design also allows for very easy saddle installation. Look at the angle here of my Allen key, as opposed to the old one, which was pretty typical quarter turn at a time, taking you forever to do so. Also here, once you undo this little tightening nuts, you can slide it out and boom, 
<laughs> everything came apart. And by the way, there is no valve here where you can adjust the internal pressure. Now that lack of or limited end user serviceability can be seen as a con, definitely when compared with something like this. This is a PMW Loam lifetime warranty, the ones that are cartridge based, it's something that you can do at home fairly easily. You cannot really do that with the new Fox transfer or the old one for that matter. If you're wondering about weight, the old dropper is 562 grams that's for a 150 the 175 is 613 grams so about 50 grams difference between the two this being the 175. Fox has always had a dropper remote but the old one was pretty bad so I've used this one with the Shimano I have reviewed both the cheaper Alivio or the OR remote and the XDR for you guys. I'm going to link it in the description. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that this new design introduced a new dropper remote as well. That is actually a lot better. I might end up using it. It comes in this fancy looking Fox transfer remote little box. And here at the end, you're going to see all the details. This is 22.2, that means bark lamp. It also comes with iSpec EV because I order it like that. And inside the box, you're going to see their remote. Snap, snap. And you can take it out. It's based on a big bearing, most probably just like most of the premium remotes of today. And again, this is a big improvement compared to what they had in the past. Also in the box, you're gonna see, here's my bar clamp and the iSpec EV adapter. And you're getting both the housing and the inner cable that you're gonna need to install this. Fox mentions the weight of this as being 33 grams. Here is 34 grams. If I add the standard bar clamp, that makes it 47. If you wanna see it with the iSpec EV, here is 48 grams. And compared to my Shimano little remote that I've been using for all these years, this one comes up to 41 grams. So Fox ends up being a couple of grams heavier as for the look and feel, they are side by side, pretty similar large paddle here. You have this big bearing on the Fox remote. You have a tiny bearing here on the Shimano, but what I like about this is that it has a spring that it brings it back into position by itself. The installation of the new dropper is no different than the installation of the old dropper. You're still gonna use that little ferrule at the end of the cable here. So I'm gonna skip the details and here's my end result. I ended up going with the same remote. This is the Shimano XDR that even though only has seven millimeters of pull, it's good enough for this new Fox transfer, just like with the old. And it provides me with good control on where the dropper is gonna stop. At the end of the travel though, boom, you get a big bang, which might be a bit scary, but I appreciate it, especially when uh, going on the trail. As for side to side movement, you do have a tiny bit that is not dissimilar to the old dropper or other droppers that I've used in the past. One question still remains, is this new Fox transfer worth the extra cost? At the end of the day, it's more expensive than PNW and it's right up there with bike yoke. Well, the simple answer is for me, this is worth the extra cost. Remember, I've used the previous generation for five years with minimal maintenance. Also, every time I thought about the best dropper that I have on all my bikes, I always went back to this. This was the smoothest and the most reliable of them all. If you're wondering about the little remote, this is a huge improvement over the previous generation. Uh, I like the lower profile of the Shimano one and was already installed on my bike. So that's the only reason why I didn't go for this. But otherwise, if I needed a remote, I wouldn't hesitate to use this. But what about you folks? Do you go for a more premium dropper like this or you are settling for the cartridge based Transx 1UP PMW and things like that? Let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you like this uh, video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. And until next time, Hope to see you folks on the trails. Cheers, guys. Cheers.